So hi, Vinny. It's uh, good to see you again. We met last year in Orlando. I really enjoyed our conversations. I'm happy to provide an update what happened. Uh, also do a little bit of a deeper dive into the topic of localization. Um, when we look at SAP's customer but base... You know, you know, that was one of my favorite meetings at, at uh, Sapphire last year. The amount of countries you support and the laws you support, it's unbelievable. So I'm looking forward to this. Yes, me as well. Also to sharing this because, as you know, governments are very creative. And with <laughs> not only there is um, evolution of the legislation, so new legislations with COVID, with payments, with taxation, but every time you have a new government in a country, so the government changes, they obviously don't want to take over uh, some of the legislations the government prior to them has um, has issued. So they are also, uh, we are seeing a lot of changes also by these changes of governments. So I um, would like to talk about the topic of localization, which is uh, taking this a little bit bigger, enabling our customers, SAP customers to run in a resilient way into a reliable way wherever they operate, in a country and across countries. You know, you said governments are becoming more creative, right? It's yes. funny, you talk to politicians, they go, oh, business people are so creative. They're always avoiding taxes and regulations and so on. I think it's the other way around. I think the politicians are much more creative. <laughs> Yes, they are more creative, and especially also when you see, and uh, we will be talking about this in the presentation as well, you see the numbers of uh, governments which are digitalizing and um, even um, introducing e-invoicing, mandatory e-invoicing, how the numbers have picked up in the, in the last years. So there was not even only the legislation and the innovation on the legislation with different topics, but also the digitalization. You see this very clearly. Yeah, so let me let me start briefly um, with the um, challenges and opportunities obviously customers are facing today. Um, so actually the strongest companies are um, can quickly respond to the challenges they are facing. And there are many of them where business transformation is needed. Obviously, the supply chains have to be adjusted to be more resilient. Obviously, sustainability in every shape or form is um, demanding here. But there is also um, an increasing need to comply with regulatory um, compliance here and also to cope the topic of skills empl skilled employees. And what is, uh, in a nutshell, the answer of SAP? Obviously, um, we are here to support our customers to in their transition to become intelligent and sustainable enterprises. Here with uh, SAP as for HANA, uh, the cloud ERP paired with SAP Business Technology Platform as the um, front and center answer to that. So offer this resiliency capabilities with finance, uh, with HR, uh, core HR and all these functions. And then um, obviously BTP being there for um, as a platform for SAP applications to build upon, but also for customer developers and partners to extend uh, beyond um, SAP capabilities. You see here the line of business. And you see also the support for industry specifics, end-to-end -end processes, where customers are getting the ability to run the processes, get the process insights, and with that also um, can run in an intelligent and sustainable way. To uh, see the topic a little bit of um, localization, here is a little bit of a world map, and you see here the um, some of the recent uh, regulations issued by countries which require attention by the customers. So especially one in Poland, Safti, um, Romania, this went live uh, last year, Poland um, as well, which was a very, very complex uh, legislation. You see here in Brazil, uh, all over the world, Mexico, US, obviously, you see an APJ, uh, many VAT related uh, legislation. So there was a couple of those and when customers are operating in these countries, and they are, they expect obviously the software to reflect these legislations. And this is exactly um, the benefit they are getting out of that. So customers are able to run globally. They can truly run their business utilizing SAP process processes in a localized version. So they can be in a country and obviously also switch between countries. So to give you one example, when we have seen the high inflation rates in Argentina, many customers are, were telling us 
well, 90% of uh, inflation, of rate of inflation is too high. And we were then offering some payroll localized versions in other countries and customers can, could move into other countries as well. Um, the first and foremost also priority is here, the peace of mind. So keeping up with the legal mandates so customers can be safe and secure that SAP is delivering not only the legislation in the initial version, but along the um, lifespan of the solution means as long as the maintenance contract is on premise or private cloud, or as long as the subscription is, we are delivering updates uh, with all the recent, very recent legislations. And obviously here for topics like invoicing, statutory reporting, tax management worldwide, there are standard processes issued by the government. And here we are offering solutions to automate these processes and also to comply with the uh, requirements of the governments. And this is not only to run safe and secure today and to operate successfully, but also to uh, capitalize on innovation. So when you think about subscription-based building or sustainability, new topics arising, these are also topics highly relevant to um, localization, to local versions, country versions. And here, customers are also enabled to uh, run and capitalize on the innovation as well. When we look at the uh, summary, obviously, uh, we have a pretty decent customer base uh, with the users worldwide, pretty uh, great coverage. And what localization really means, it means that we are taking the software and its capabilities and are adjusting the business processes with the regulations, with the legislation to, uh, towards a local version. So this is a business process capability, so to speak, of the software to be adjusted uh, to the respective countries. When we look at the portfolio, obviously we cover the um, major areas here with finance, spend management, human resources, customer experience. We talk about document reporting compliance, re-invoicing, um, and uh, statutory reporting there. We are talking about internationalization, and we are talking as well about languages. So uh, translation is not part of localization, but also SAP is enabling customers to run in a, the software uh, in the language of their user. We are delivering this in different ways because there is a decent number of software versions we are localizing as SAP, the most complex processes, the most complex countries, but also customers can configure localization and they can also extend uh, for countries where SAP is not covering. So countries where they want to go with a partner and partners helping them also to extend the software to the local needs. And obviously we are talking the end-to-end -end processes which are covered as well. A little bit more detail on that one when we look at the areas. Yeah, Vinny. On the sustainability reporting. Yes. That's one thing I'm hearing from companies. They're very frustrated because it's not just national level. Local governments are coming up with all kinds of ESG requirements. You know, you talk about being creative. I think some bureaucrats are being very opportunistic because they see an opportunity with climate change and so on to come up with regulations. Often they don't make any sense. What what are you finding with sustainability reporting? Is it is it still very early, or are you seeing some patterns emerge around the world? Yes, absolutely. This is top of mind for for governments and for customers because when you just think the topic of plastic taxes, this is more than eighty percent of all the legislation is right now in governments around plastic taxes, and we will see an example later. So plastic taxes also when you have the weight of the packaging material. So the packaging material, the um, uh, how poor products are packaged, this is also up for, for reporting and different local standards per, per country. So Italy is different from UK, different from Spain and other countries, yes. Okay. So here it, it really is introduced in a mandatory way and uh, governments are, are really pursuing that path to foster also the legislation on sustainability reporting per country. So here, um, just I'm double clicking on what we have seen earlier of the process area, you see a finance document, reporting compliance, spend management, human um, capital management, and customer experience. And um, 
the major processes we are covering. And uh, obviously this is accounting tax management. I will not read all of them, but the major processes around taxation and payments um, and um, treasury audits, invoicing um, are up to um, localization and also regulation by governments. When we look at patterns of customers, when they start a business in a country, typically they are starting with a finance process, which is then followed by the payroll processes. So these two processes customers do um, in the first place when they are kind of entering a country, first setting up the accounting processes and then payroll to pay their employees. And then the vast majority is then al already, if there is um, here a mandatory e-invoicing need issued by the government of the country, they want to also comply here. So they are using the document reporting compliance to um, uh, have here the electronic invoicing documents exchange with the authorities, the partners, and the also the respective reporting, statutory reporting, sustainability reporting. You're on payroll. Do you find when they first enter, do they want to outsource and then bring it in? Or right away, they want to implement a payroll system? They want to implement a payroll system. Um, and uh, when this is actually a perfect segue, because you look here, uh, at the next slide, what is the number of local versions we are offering? And we are offering the payroll in 104 countries, which is obviously uh, um, a great coverage of countries. So customers can run the payroll in 104 countries localized by SAP. Um, what the slide is telling is actually the total when you take the SAP products and you see here the products listed and when you combine them, you add them up, we are in total delivering 585 local versions across SAP products. And um, the even more important number is the legal number of legal changes per year. In 2022, these were 1,300 legal changes across the countries. And um, this is a growth of 10% year over year. So since years, this is growing and growing and growing. And therefore I mentioned governments are creative and um, have here um, pretty decent numbers on, on legal changes, which are then kept keeping us busy to provide this in the software for our customers. You see here also some great testimony from uh, the analyst perspective. So Gartner here um, and also others are um, telling that SAP's um, localization capabilities are really a differentiating capabilities for SAP but also of uh, respective value for our customers here. Then I would uh, like to double click on three topics. The first is document and reporting compliance. And I mentioned already how this volume in the invoicing is increasing. So you see here 500% increase in governance related volumes. You see in 2014, we had eight countries with mandatory legal mandates. Now we have in 2022, 44. So this is a sizable uh, increase and um, tells customers that they uh, in these countries have to use electronic ways to exchange the invoices with the government. Obviously they wanna be in control also about uh, of the payment flows and the invoices in the enterprise. Um, I want to here bring up a solution which we are offering. This is document SAP uh, document and reporting compliance. And the uh, beauty of the solution is actually that it reflects the reality of our customers. And you know, there are many customers still on ECC. There are many uh, migra have migrated to S4HANA, private, public, and on-premise. And wherever customers are, they can use this, this solution because um, as said, many, many are still in hybrid landscapes and hybrid use of um, SAP's solution. And here they can manage the invoicing process, they can exchange with the governments, and they can also have transparency uh, about their payments and what has been exchanged with the tax authorities. Another topic I wanna bring up here is billing and revenue innovation management. So in this year, um, actually, this is a statistic from McKinsey saying that 75% of organizations which are selling directly to cons consumers will offer subscription-based services. And these 
uh, business models, obviously customers want to reflect. So reflect a subscription and usage-based digital business model. Uh, think about streaming services. Think about car sharing, all these uh, business processes. Um, originally, it came kind of from the telecommunications industry. So uh, these complex processes do vary across countries. And we offer here with the SAP Billing Revenue Innovation Management also the localized versions for the respective e-invoicing for taxes, territory report, but also payment. To your question, Vinny, um, here, uh, this is the topic of sustainability. And um, actually, it, again, the statistic here, I brought a number, 83% of legal measures related to sustainable packaging worldwide are focusing right now on plastics. And right now, there are 147 measures identified. And um, single-use plastics, obviously, in country C of the European Union, but many other countries as well. So what customers do want is transparency, but also to be compliant, to be knowledgeable uh, about these measures and have them reflected in um, the SAP responsible design and production solution, which enables them centrally to have an oversight across the countries they do operate and also the compliance. So what is the uh, respective impact uh, in a country? And here uh, we are also supporting um, the uh, sustainability topic as well. I think the most um, telling is always what do customers do really do and what is uh, what do they achieve? Um, so obviously they expand into countries and their customers running 100 local versions across 100 countries. But when we look at uh, some numbers here and some customers, we talk Nestle Brazil, uh, so they uh, use the tax declaration framework and they have a 60% efficiency gain out of their fiscal departments. Or Siemens, um, I had the pleasure to meet them and to sort of talk to them in some events and they um, using document and reporting compliance. They are live in 18 countries and uh, they are pretty quick. So they have a small team uh, which is really doing the implementation every new uh, company code every third day. And for them, um, one of the advantages is the really low TCO. So this is not only the normal, you know, coverage they are able to run and operate in these countries, but um, the low TCO. Um, we have an example of a multinational food packaging and processing company. And here they are live already with the plastic packaging tax in the UK and planning now to go to Spain and Italy next, just to... Uh, mentioned a few examples, um, a huge um, high-tech company, very well known with the famous search engine uh, goes here uh, with the billing revenue innovation management into 43 countries and some other examples as well. I also brought with me a kind of a, some, some patterns we see across customers. So what do they do? And they um, obviously start in one market um, here going in with payment function, financial functions and payroll functions. Then they are uh, moving into establishing the relationship and businesses with the government authorities. Then they are scaling, so automating um, repetitive tasks, in innovating new business models, subscription, moving into sustainability um, reporting. And then they are scaling in countries. and. These countries, they do also change or adjust. And this is the flexibility resiliency we offer um, that they can move across countries uh, because we, they have kind of the choice and the software is already there. So wrapping up here um, with an example of Taylor Education Group um, and to see uh, a little bit their journey, um, they are, um, education provider here in APJ, in Malaysia, Singapore, in Vietnam. And they started uh, with success factors plus the payroll function. They started in Malaysia and Singapore simultaneously. They went then into Vietnam and then they uh, started really and moved forward with optimization, with a legal framework, financial reporting standards, tax calculation, all of these um, solutions across these countries uh, where they started with HR, but also then with the finance function. 
just to show an example of a customer who established a presence immediately in multiple markets. Would like to wrap up here. Um, so I was talking that we are offering customers the ability to run um, wherever they operate. They operate in a country um, as, a, as a company, but also as a multinational company, they operate across countries. When you take the SAP customer base um, just out of the US, 80% of customers we have in the US are truly global companies. They do not operate only in the US, but they have subsidiaries um, in countries um, across the world. So what are customers able to do? They can operate seamlessly across borders because we are taking care and providing them with peace of mind, so to speak, whatever the um, regulations are, whatever geopolitical upheavals are, the software is there and ready and is um, able to, uh, well, ready to use, so to speak. They can stay compliant uh, globally and locally because we are updating the software as legislation occurs. So think about safety in Poland, Polish government has a new uh, legislation on the electronic um, invoicing, so to speak, and there, many customers operating out of Germany or out of other countries having subsidiaries in Poland obviously need to comply. So as the standards are evolving along the lifespan of the solution, we are updating this here. And as well, we are enabling business innovation. So new business model, and we talked a little bit the sustainability topic. So this I wanted to share today and um, happy to discuss and take questions. I this is this is excellent. You know, when you, I'd like you to come back at least once a year, because uh, this is fascinating, and maybe you can come and share those examples of appeals, right? So last yes. year, uh, the Russian embargo, we see yes. this moving business out of China. Maybe come and show how you have helped companies make those transitions, right? Because I'm sure you have examples. So yes, talk about, absolutely. Talk about how you quickly allow people to react to global changes, maybe maybe come with a couple of case studies on that. That would be great. And then yes. I like the Malaysian example because you know, you're know you showing somebody who can who can multiple countries at, at one time, but it'd be nice to see, okay, if I wanna move from one country to another, how quickly can I do that? Bring some of those examples. Yes, yes, we'll do, uh, Vinny, I'm happy to do so. And Actually, there are, there are, I would say, two patterns you see. The one is you establish a new business in a country. So what are the processes that you do? Obviously, the financial processes and the payroll processes come first when you enter a country. And then the other is you react flexibly to whatever happens. As I mentioned, in Argentina, the high inflation of 90%. Customers were asking us, they want to move to other countries in Latin America. They want to see, stay in the same kind of geography or larger geography or the region. But uh, there we offered pretty quickly uh, two payroll localized versions to new ones. The customers could go there. So you see many of these examples where customers are then starting in a country and then um, uh, expanding across countries, but also going out of a country and going into building up business into, into in, in other countries as well. And this is the flexibility we are offering because this is not only SAP provided localization with the local versions we have seen, the 585, but also we are offering partners so customers can um, kind of task a partner to provide a local, localized version in a country where SAP is not offering this. So they have even more flexibility. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed the conversation today. Thanks for having me today. Eva, this is, I mean, like I said, come back every year. The world changes so quickly and it's remarkable you can keep up with all the changes. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, this is a strength of SAP, but I'm very proud, you know, last year we had 2022, the 50th uh, year of SAP, the anniversary. And actually the topic of localization was a key design pattern of our founders. So they were, um, they were already thinking about the business and the nature of our customers. So they are truly global companies. So this, you see this reflected also in the, in the software by, by our first founders. You know, I've heard Hasso talk about ICI, 
how you yes. got started 50 years ago. Yes. But yeah, I mean, he, you know, like you say, you've been global from day one. So yes, yes, yes. And you see this, this is um, core DNA of SAP. And you speak wonderful English. So I mean, that makes it even easier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eva. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny, for having me today.